Today's topic is instruments in obstetrics and gynecology. So this is asked for five marks in all practical examinations. So this first instrument is a curved artery forceps. So you can identify it with the linear serrations inside it. So this is a medium artery. There is also a long artery and a small artery. So it has got a catch, clamp and crush. So it can uh, uh, be used to catch the bleeders and also to secure hemostasis. Now this is uh, the last instrument we saw was a curved artery. This is a straight artery. So it also has got linear serrations and it is um, medium in size. So the other variants are the small artery and the long artery. The small one is also called as a mosquito. So this is a straight artery it's used for holding peritoneum while closing the abdomen. This is stra medium straight artery, the same instrument with the linear serrations and the catch, clamp and crush. There, this is a latch there. Uh, so, this artery forceps can be curved in straight types. The inner side has linear serrations. It is used for catching and clamping the bleeding vessels and for grasping the tissues at the time of operations like opening and closing the peritoneum. This is the same instrument, medium curved artery. Uh, this is also the medium curved artery. Now, coming to another instrument called as the ALS forceps in which we can identify the instrument with the help of multiple tooth. This is a traumatic instrument. This also has got a latch. So it is used for grasping structures like rectus sheath or fascia while opening and closing the abdominal wall in surgeries like tubectomy, lower segment cesarean sections, laparotomy, abdominal hysterectomy. And it is a traumatic instrument so you cannot hold anything vascular but tough fibrous structures are very useful. And it is also used to hold vaginal wall during uh, vaginal hysterectomy and margins of vagina in the vault closure during abdominal hysterectomy. So this is the same instrument LS forceps. Now coming to the next instrument that is Babcock's forceps in which you can, it is a non-traumatic instrument which is very gentle. It is used to hold tubular vascular structures like fallopian tube. It has also got a latch and it is blunt and atraumatic and there is no sharp tooth and it is used for grasping tubular structures like fallopian tube and tubectomy and the modified polymerized technique is one of the methods for tubal sterilization. So this is the same instrument, Babcock's forceps. Now coming to the next instrument that is IS spatula and this is the coplex jar. So it is used to take sampling from the transformation zone. This is the, the long limb which goes inside the internal loss and this is the short limb and then rotated by 360 degrees and then it is smeared on a glass slide. The glass slide is then inserted in the coplex jar which contains ethanol and it is sent to the pathology for the pap smear. So it is used for taking pap smear for screening of cancer cervix. It is made of wood so that cells will adhere to the porous surface and its long end is inserted into the cervical canal and rotated by 360 degrees. The exfoliated cells obtained are smeared on the glass slide and fixed in a fluid in complex jar which contains either an alcohol in equal amount. The other broad end is used for obtaining cells from the lateral vaginal wall for knowing the hormonal status that is the other side of the eye spatula. Now these days we are not using pap smear at all. So in our OPD we are using something called liquid based cytology and this is the brush uh, and this goes inside the internal loss and then it is rotated by 360 degrees and then this is a detachable brush. So this goes into the liquid based cytology solution and this is uh, the brush is detached and this is sent in the solution or sometimes you can even take viral samples for chlamydia for culture of the cervical secretions and if you want to culture the chlamydia we can send in the viral transport media or the bacterial transport media. Now next instrument is the endocervical cytobrush. So this is used for endocervical sampling in case of endocervical adenocarcinomas and also it can be combined along with the spatulas in the pap smear sampling to increase the sensitivity and specificity for the detection of cervical cancer. Next instrument is Cusco speculum. So we see here this is double blade and this is self-retaining. So it is inserted inside and then it is the jaws are thrust open and then it is held in place with the help of a screw. So no assistant is required. So Cusco's uh, self-retaining vaginal speculum is also called as duckbill speculum and uh, it is a double bladed self-retaining vaginal speculum that is its advantage over SIMS is that SIMS required an assistance for holding and it is used for routine examination of cervix and to visualize lesions like cervical polyps, cervical erosion, cancer cervix, 
VIA, visual inspection after application of acetic acid, visual inspection after application of Lugol's iodine, colposcopy and biopsy cervix all can be done with the help of this self-retaining speculum. So, it, the advantages are it is self-retaining, so no need of an assistant to hold the speculum. It can be used for taking pap smears, insertion copper tea, removal of copper tea. But it carries disadvantages like you cannot properly visualize the vaginal wall because they get hidden behind the blades and there is a limited opening of the blades. Our next instrument is Doyen's retractor. So, you can see this is like the shape of a bladder. So, it is used to retract the bladder during surgeries like cesarean section. So, this is the same instrument turned. And now coming to the Devers retractor, it is used in uh, total abdominal hysterectomy and it is used for dis ret retraction of the bowel loops and the vaginal wall. And it is sometimes there may be a right angle and it is used for tubectomy.